that the workshop is recording. So, all right. Um, and I think that, you know, we've, we've maybe been acquainted before, but I'm Maria. Uh, I'm the Language Arts Lab coordinator, and um, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about APA citations, um, in-text citations, reference page citations, and things like that. Um, and then if you are required to be here or you are here to receive class credit, then please just send me a message in the chat box with your name and your instructor's name. And with that, we'll get started. All right. So first, we want to keep in mind that not all classes cite in the same way. Always check in with your instructor uh, review your assignment requirements and make sure that you um, are familiar with the format that you are citing in. Um, always, always check with your instructor if you're unsure. Um, resources are your course instructor, of course, the Language Arts Lab, the APA 7 Handbook, and Purdue OWL. These are all things that will help you um, get your citations done. And then before we get into what it is, um, let's talk a little bit about why it's important. Uh, it's not just kind of like busy work that, you know, our instructors say, oh, make sure you do this at the end kind of thing. Um, it is, it, it serves a purpose. First, it shows that you've done research. So it kind of um, builds your ethos or your credibility as an author of a, a piece of writing. It also gives credit where credit is due um, to avoid plagiarism, which, um, you know, plagiarism is, um, you know, just kind of like an ethical no-no. Um, we don't want to pass off anybody's work as our own. Um, you know, we want to push ourselves to, to come up with these, um, you know, creative original analyses, things like that. Um, and um, we also want to make sure that when we are um, referencing another piece of work or somebody else's work, that we use that citation because finally it shows readers how and where they can learn more about a certain topic. So for general formatting, this is what your title page will look like. You will have, um, let's see, minimize this little screen thing here. Okay, so you'll have your page number up in the top right corner. The title of the paper will be in bold a couple spaces down from the top. And then you'll use two spaces in between the title of the paper. And then type your name, space, your college or university, space, the class that you're working on, space, your professor's name, space, the date, February 26, 2021. Or if it were today, you know, we'd say March 30th, 2022. Um, all right, and then another thing um, with APA 7, um, APA 7 um, was published in 2020, um, student papers do not need running heads anymore. Um, professional papers still use running heads, but there's this, there's this thing that APA student papers used to require called a running head, where in the top left-hand corner of every single page of your paper, you would have a shortened title. Um, that is no longer required. However, um, if your professor is requiring a running head, then um, that's something that, you know, I can help you um, figure that out and things like that. But um, in this workshop, in this presentation, um, I'm talking about everything by the book, um, by APA 7, um, the most updated standards. And so um, according to APA 7, um, American, um, I'm sorry, according to APA 7, student papers don't need that running head anymore. Alrighty, and now we'll talk about in-text citations. When we craft our in-text citations, we are concerned with who wrote the source or who created the source and when. So we always must know who and when. There are a couple of different ways to cite in-text. The first is the parenthetical citation, which appears in parentheses. The word parenthetical is just a fancy adjective that says that, you know, this thing is in parentheses. So parenthetical citation is a citation in parentheses. It always goes at the end of the sentence. You can think of it as almost like the last word of the sentence. So at the end of the word, we always have a period. You will always have a period on the outside of your parenthetical citation. The format is pretty simple, author, comma, year in parentheses. So an example of this would be Smith, comma, 2019. 
The other way to do it is through signal phrasing. Signal phrasing is when we signal to our readers within you know, our writing, within a phrase of our writing that we are about to um, use a source. So for example, Lord 1984 explains the significance of internalized depression. You'll notice that the year always stays in parentheses. You can, rather than putting you know, the author's last name in parentheses, you can put the author's name within your sentence but you always have to put the year and the year always goes in parentheses right next to the author's last name. If you are citing a direct quote in APA format, it doesn't matter if you're using a parenthetical citation or you're doing a signal phrase. If you are citing a direct quote, you must include the page number. So in a parenthetical citation, um, it would look like this, 1984, page 243. Um, in the signal phrase, Lord demands, then we've got the quote, and then after the quote, we've got the year, comma, the page number, followed by a period at the very end. Sorry if you can't quite see that very well over my little note. Okay, and so here are where, um, here's where things can get a little tricky with APA. Um, when we're citing APA format, there are some situations that come up. Sometimes it's important to know how to um, address these types of circumstances in our citations. So here's what we want to do if our source has multiple authors. If the source, the one source that we're using, has more than one author, we'll separate the names with an ampersand. An ampersand is that little and symbol. Jones and Smith, comma 2019. So we've still got that comma in there. We've still got the date um, or the year, excuse me, um, but we've just got Jones and Smith. So these two authors joined by that ampersand, no commas needed here. We've got last names, comma, year. All righty, what if you are citing multiple sources within one sentence? So I wrote one sentence that includes a statistic from one source, it includes a fact from another source and a third source. That would be a lot of information to pack into one sentence, but if you ever have to do that, here's how you will navigate it. Jones and Smith, uh, comma 2019. So we've got that last name, comma year format that we're sticking with, that standard format, but we've got two more sources as well. So we're gonna separate those with a semicolon. The source is formatted the same exact way, author last name, comma year, author last name, comma, year, author last name, comma, year. Just separated with these semicolons. And you'll also notice that they are listed alphabetically. So we've got J, M, Z, and again, period on the outside of the parentheses. This is where things can get a little, little tricky, but it does come up. Um, relatively often. So it's good to know um, how to, how to um, use um, a citation when you are citing a source within a source. We also refer to this as an indirect quote or an indirect source because we want to cite some information that we found in another place, not from like the original source, if that makes sense. So we'll look at an example here. While reading an article by Pounder in 2007, uh, we find inf useful information from Selden. So Pounder wrote an article and in Pounder's article, they cite Selden from 1993. Well, that in my reading of Pounder's article, I think that Selden's information is extremely useful. So I want to grab that information. Um, I want to use this um, statistic that Selden offered in Pounder's article. Selden, 1993, as cited in Pounder, 2007, finds that 86% of higher educational yada, yada, yada. So this statistic of 86% of higher ed, Pounder used that statistic that was Selden's statistic originally. Well, I'm like, thanks, Pounder. I also want to use that statistic. So I'm going to use the author's last name, Selden. Selden is the one who did 
um, come up with this um, information or originally published this information. So I've got the author's last name and I'm gonna keep the year right next to it. Um, just like we mentioned before, when we were talking about the signal phrasing, the year will always go in parentheses next to the author name. So we've got Selden 1993, comma, as cited in Pounder, comma 2007. And remember, um, when we have um, just that basic parenthetical citation, it's last name, comma, year. So then we've just got last name, comma, year here. Selden 1993, and then comma, as cited in Pounder, comma 2007. For the references page, you will only cite Pounder, which is how you found that Selden uh, statistic originally. This is kind of a tricky topic, um, a tricky um, thing to navigate sometimes. If you have any questions or if anything is unclear, um, please let me know. I hope I explained that um, relatively clearly, um, but it is tricky. So if you ever have questions about that um, or if you have any questions now, please just let me know. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the references page and we're gonna look at some examples there. And so to look at our examples of the references page, I'm actually going to pull up a document from the writing resources page on uh, GRCC's website. So if you Google GRCC writing resources or writing resources GRCC, the very first link that will pop up, you click on that, and it will load hopefully, all righty. And then scroll down and we've got these, um, these PDFs linked onto the website that are just kind of little tip sheets on how to do things like um, using commas or APA7, for example. And so we're gonna open up this document and you'll notice the first page is all about the general formatting and, and things that we talked about in text citations, um, citing a direct quote, there's information on the abstract. If you have to write an abstract, um, I'm not covering that in this presentation, but please let me know if you um, are required to, to write an abstract and um, myself or any of the tutors in the lab are happy to help you with that. But the second page really is all about the references entries. So if you're familiar with MLA citations, you will know that um, when you have a page of your citations, that's called the works cited page. Um, APA has that page that's dedicated to citations, but it's not called the Works Cited page, it's called the References page. So you'll type references and center it at the top of the page. You will alphabetize all of your sources by the first letter. It will go in alphabetical order. You will not put numbers in front of them. You will not put them in chronological order of like when you used them in your essay and things like that. You will use hanging indents which is um, basically, it's, it's just a, it's an indentation on the second line of your citation. So right here, you can see that this second line of the citation has an indent. Um, if you have questions on how to incorporate your hanging indents or um, get them in through your word processor, let me know, I can help you out with that. Um, you will maintain double spacing just as you were using throughout the essay, your, um, your um, references entries will also be double spaced. List all authors, uh, up to 20 authors. So if you have a, um, a references entry that has uh, more than 20 authors, then you won't list them all. But if there are 20 authors, you will list all 20 of them. Um, and then this is another tricky thing about APA. You'll capitalize only, capitalize only the first word of titles, subtitles, words after colons and dashes, and proper nouns when you are writing out the title of the source. And so we'll look at that, um, what that means in an example. But first, um, so we're just gonna go over how to cite um, what the references entry looks like for a website, for an online journal. And then we've also got these other two examples down there. Um, we won't talk too much about those um, just because I think that, you know, for the most part, folks are working within websites and online journals. Um, but if you have any questions about any other citation formats, um, please feel free to ask. We can look it up and work through it together. Um, there are, you know, specific ways, according to APA, there are ways um, to correctly cite things like a YouTube video or a tweet or a Twitch uh, stream, anything like that. There is a like a proper way to cite that. So let's just take a look at the website. 
It's going to start with the author's last name, comma, their first initial, period, and their middle initial, period, if they have one. Next, in parentheses, we're going to have the year, comma, then the month and the date. Parentheses, period on the outside of the parentheses. Then we have the title of the page, which is in italics. And then the site name, the website's name that is not italicized. Lastly, we will have the URL with no punctuation on the end. So with um, actual source informa information um, input, let's take a look at this. Last name, comma, first initial, period. Price, comma, D, period. So it looks like this author did not have a middle initial. So last name, comma, first initial, period, parentheses, year, comma, month, and date. Um, so if it were today's date, we would say 2022, excuse me, 2022, comma, March 30, parentheses, period. Next, we've got the title of the web page. Laziness does not exist. This is the title of the web page. It is in italics, and only the first letter of the title is capitalized. That's something that we kind of, um, you know, usually we think of titles of, you know, like web pages and books and things like that. We think of the as a proper noun, so everything should be capitalized. Um, APA only wants you to capitalize the first letter of the first word. So after the title in italics with a period on the outside, we'll have the um, web page, or I'm sorry, the website name. So this uh, article is on Medium. So Medium period, because the site name is followed by a period. And then finally the URL. And so here is the URL, no punctuation at the end. Any questions about this? All right. So we'll also take a look at the online journal citation. Again, we've got the last name, comma, first initial, middle initial. Oh, and then also this example is as if this online journal article was written by two authors. So last name, comma, first initial, middle initial, ampersand, just like with our in-text citations, if we have more than one author, we're connecting them with the ampersand, the and symbol. So we've got last name, first name, or I'm sorry, last name, comma, first initial, middle initial, ampersand, last name, comma, first initial, middle initial. And then we've got the year in parentheses, followed by a period on the outside. The title of the article, which is not italicized, it's just normal format lettering, only the first letter of the first word is capitalized got a period after the title and then we've got the title of the periodical or the title of the journal and that is italicized and then that is followed by a comma and then here's where things get a little bit tricky um, we've got the volume number and the issue number so every journal will have a volume number and an issue number and this is how it wants you to form APA asks you to format this so you'll put the volume number in italics and then you will all, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, and then you will put the issue number in parentheses directly next to the volume number, no space in between, but the issue number in parentheses will not be italicized. So we've got the italicized volume number and then the unitalicized issue number in parentheses. That is followed by a comma at the, on the outside of the parentheses and then the page numbers, period DOI. DOI is like a URL, but it's um, it's a very like strong link. It's the same as a URL; it's a link, but it's um, in library science. Um, you know, they've made it so um, these links won't break. They will always bring you back to um, the journal that um, contains this article. So here we'll look at this example filled out, and actually in this example we've got three authors. So this is what. You will, oh, I think I accidentally clicked on the link. My bad. All right, let's go back down here. So here's what um, your citation entry will look like if you have a source with three authors. 
Again, we've got the last name, comma, first initial, and then we'll separate the first two with a comma. So last name, comma, first initial, comma, last name, comma, first initial, and middle initial. This person does have a middle initial, comma, and then we get the ampersand back in there. So you'll separate these first two by a comma, and then the last one will have comma ampersand. Last name, comma, first initial, initial, middle initial. Then we've got the year in parentheses with a period on the outside. Here's the title of the article. It is not in, I'm sorry, here is the title of the article. It's not in italics or anything like that. And then we've just got this first letter of the first word, the D capitalized, the development and validation of the active empathetic listening scale. We've got a period at the end of this title here. And then the title of the periodical comes next, Psychology and Marketing. Psychology and Marketing is the title of the journal, the journal or the periodical. Um, and so that will be in italics followed by a comma. And now we've got this funky volume number issue number thing. So the volume is number 23, so it's italicized. Issue number two, non-italicized in parentheses directly next to the volume number. And then on the outside of the parentheses then we'll have a comma with the page range, the page numbers, and you don't put the P dot or PP dot, you just put the, the actual numbers, 161 to 180, period. Okay, got a period after these numbers, and then we've got a DOI at the very end. All right, so that's the online journal, and then we've also got the book example here and the podcast episode example here, um, but that's really all I wanted to, to show you was kind of how to work through these examples of the website and the online journal. Um, so I'm going to go back here and... Um, actually, yeah, I think that is all I had. Um, got We went over the, the references page examples, and then I just wanted to remind you of resources that are available um, to work on your citations. Your course instructor, of course, will know what citation style you should be using. The Language Arts Lab can help you with any specific citation questions that you have. We're all versed in citations. Um, we have copies of the APA 7 handbook, so if you have a really, really, really specific question, then you're welcome to come by and use the handbook or, um, you know, any of the tutors can look through the handbook with you. And then Purdue OWL is also a website that has um, some good information and tips on how to cite your sources. So that is all I had for you today. Um, do you have any questions, Leslie? I actually do. So um, I don't know if you know how to do this, but I do need to cite because I'm using information from a lesson mm -hmm. and I need to cite my professor. Mm -hmm. um, do you know how to do that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I can show you um, how to do that and I can actually show you how to find like the example of how to do that. Um, are you citing, is it like from a PowerPoint or? Um, well, it's from a lesson she gave in class. I think I could find it in a PowerPoint. Okay, that's okay. Um, Cause there, I think there's a difference if you are citing specifically like a PowerPoint or if you're citing um, just like, a, like a, a class lesson, something that was discussed. But let me, um, I'm gonna share my screen with you. And I'm gonna pull up my good friend, Purdue Owl. And so if you ever have a specific like pretty like specific questions like this that this sheet doesn't cover, my next step would be Purdue OWL. And you can do this for like literally any, like whatever the situation is with citing. I'm gonna search Purdue OWL APA um, instructor lesson. So let's see, instructor lesson citation. All right, and then I'm going to go down here. And I see Purdue would you would like to reference this source in text as you normally would but da, 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 for lecture notes. Okay, so I see that this one talks about lectures, so I'm going to click on it. 
And then I'm going to do this. There we go. So reference list, electronic sources. Let's see. Wikipedia article, online scholarly journal, article for Nietzsche, the online periodical, no DOI, abstract, online news article, electronic or Kindle books. Da, 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 da. See, there are so many options. Um, okay, online lecture notes and presentation slides. So here is an example of that if it is through um, the slides, if you have the information on the slides. And so I'm just going to send you a link to this page on Purdue OWL. So you have that. Um, and here's kind of like the skeleton of what it would look like. So it would be your instructor's um, last name and then their first and middle initials. And then the year, month, and the date of the presentation, uh, what the presentation was titled. And then you would literally put like lecture notes or PowerPoint slides, whatever format it was. And then publisher, if it, it's just your teacher, you wouldn't need to put that at all. If it's a UR, if there is a URL, you could use that. But let's see if we can find the citation option for if um, you're just talking about like the general like notes, general discussion without um, kind of attaching it to to uh, some slides. Yeah, because I'm also getting um, this information from like a homework assignment and it had notes in there as well from the lecture. Okay. So. Go to site, let's see. Um, actually, right, I'm gonna, let's see, I'm gonna get rid of this guy. And I'm going to look at the sidebar here, APA formatting and style guide. And so are you wondering specifically for the references page? Yes. Yeah. OK. Um, OK, and references, other books, sources, maybe other non-print sources interviews, presentations without an online source. This would be, I think, we're getting close. Individual presentation at a large seminar, <laughs> unpublished works, manuscript and preparation, personal communication. Okay, so I would use the presentation presentation without an online source. Let's see, individual presentation. So these ones would all have like a kind of like a, an event attached to it. P. Robbins, personal communication. So I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to see if there is, I'm sure there is a specific way to do it. And I thought that it was available. Um, I'm sorry. I thought it was available on Purdue OWL, but I might have to grab our book actually. Um, I'm going to stop my share for a second. Let's see. Let's see.
Okay, so I am now, I'm reading the guidance from um, the APA is saying, it says that if you have like class notes or lecture notes um, that are like verbal or written down like in a PowerPoint, the first thing that you would want to do is list it as an electronic source. But if you don't have that like link or PowerPoint to like actually attach to it, then you will um, do it as a personal communication, which is one of the ones that we actually had just looked at in the other non-print sources. So I'm gonna share my screen again with you. References list, other non-print sources, interviews, presentation, presentation, individual presentation, unpublished, unpublished, personal communication. So any communication that cannot be directly retrieved, like, so meaning that like, yeah, you can't actually like give us a link to it or anything is considered a personal communication. Um, you could, instead of writing like personal communication, you could do like class lecture and then put the date. So you would put like S Slomsky comma class lecture comma and then the date of the lecture. Okay, and what if I have, so I have the homework assignment and like she wrote like lecture notes in that homework assignment and it's from like a Google Docs PDF like document. Mm -hmm. Um, would I also do that as a personal communication or would I be able to cite that like um, with, the, what, with the link? I think if you have a link, you could cite it that way. Um, and you could follow like the, the class note slides, lecture note slides um, and, and put the link in where it asks you for the link. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Good, 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 good. You have the um, the link in the chat box to Purdue Owl that will help. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool. Um, do you want to like work through that citation together, or do you have any other specific questions that you want to ask or look at? Um, I think that's it. And okay. I'll just look at that page on Purdue Owl so I can cite it. Awesome. But, cool. Yeah. Thank you so much for helping me out. <laughs> Yeah, you're very welcome. Thanks for coming in. I'm glad that this was helpful. And um, I'll let Professor Slomsky know that you were here. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good day. Thank you, you too.